What is up you guys? My name is Aubrey and this is my channel and today we're going to be discussing two things. So the first thing that we'll be discussing is the HEROES Act, which is the new bill that is going in front of Congress today. We'll be discussing that bill, some of the key points of that bill, and how this bill could help you and your life and your livelihood. And at the end of the video, we will also be discussing some frequently asked questions regarding the EIDL grant and loan program. So if you are somebody that has questions regarding the loan program, you haven't been able to get answers to those questions, and then definitely stick around until the end of this video because I will be addressing some of those there. So let's get started. All right, so first let's discuss the HEROES Act. So the HEROES Act is pretty much just a CARES Act 2.0. It is an expansion on the stimulus package that was passed in March. And the CARES Act was a $2.2 trillion stimulus package, and the HEROES Act is a $3 trillion stimulus package. So it is quite a bit larger than the original stimulus package that was passed in March. The other thing that is important to note is that I have not read the entire bill. It is 1,800 pages, so it is incredibly long. I have skimmed it. I have read a bunch of articles and summarizations of the bill, so I will cite those sources in the description below so that you can check them out yourself. But the first thing I want to talk about in regard to the HEROES Act is the stimulus checks. So very similarly to the CARES Act, the HEROES Act will include $1,200 stimulus checks. If you qualified and you were eligible for the stimulus checks in the CARES Act, then you will be eligible for the ones in the HEROES Act. So if you made less than $75,000, then you will qualify. And then once you make more than $75,000, those payments start to decrease. But a good rule of thumb is that if you qualified for the first round and if you've received stimulus money from the first round, then you will also receive money in the second round as well. But the one big key difference with the stimulus checks in regards to the HEROES Act is that in the CARES Act, dependents were not eligible for that $1,200 stimulus check. They instead got $500 and it was sent to the person who filed them as a dependent. Meaning that if you were a college student and you were filed as a dependent on your parents' tax returns, you didn't receive anything. Instead, your parents received $500. But what is changing with the HEROES Act is that with the HEROES Act, you are eligible for the $1,200 if you are a dependent. And so in the case of many college students, for example, they only got $500 and it was sent to their parents. This time around, their parents will receive $1,200. The other big difference is that not only are college students eligible, but adult dependents are eligible as well. So if you are somebody who maybe has your elderly parents and you have filed them as a dependent, you will be eligible for that $1,200 on behalf of either your college age kids, your dependents, or your adult dependents. And you are eligible to claim up to three dependents. So you can file it up to three times. If you have four or five dependents, then the fourth and the fifth one would not count. So it only counts up to three dependents. So that means that if you are somebody who is married and you have three dependents, you are eligible for up to $6,000. And so it's $12,000 for each individual. If you're married and you meet the threshold requirement, then it's $2,400 and then it's $1,200 per each dependent up to three dependents, which means that the max maximum you can receive with this stimulus check is $6,000. The next section of the HEROES Act is rent freezes. So in the HEROES Act, it proposes that there is a 12-month freeze on evictions based on non-payment of rent. But if you are somebody who has been struggling to pay your rent, then there is a chance that this could be your lifeline as a way to avoid eviction for up to 12 months. So on that same topic is mortgages. Now this is something that a lot of people have been concerned about because if you are somebody who owns rental properties and your tenant stop paying rent, how is the landlord supposed to continue paying if they're not getting mortgage payments from their tenants? So it has kind of created this huge issue that I know a lot of landlords and a lot of real estate holders have been very concerned about. And the answer to that concern is in the HEROES Act. And that is that if you are somebody that has a mortgage, you are eligible for up to 12 months of forbearance of that mortgage payment. And it is automatically applied if you fall behind on mortgage payments. So this is going to be a huge relief to anybody that owns rental properties or even owns a house. It's gonna be that nice safety net for those people. 
Next is unemployment. So as you guys know, there is unemployment and then there's also pandemic unemployment assistance. And the pandemic unemployment assistance is what people who are independent contractors, self-employed business owners are using as a way to collect on unemployment. Now under the HEROES Act, this pandemic unemployment, which is an additional $600 a week on top of your traditional unemployment benefits, that would extend up until January 31st, 2021. And it also is saying Saying that with employment benefits, there would be an additional payment given out to frontline workers. And so there is a benefit for not only the people that have been going to work and are needing to continue to go to work, but there's also going to be a benefit to those people that have lost their job due to COVID-19. So guys, that is the HEROES Act. So I do want to emphasize that as of now, this is just a proposal. I am sure that things will change as it progresses in Congress and in the House and then to President Donald Trump's desk. And so I am not saying that everything I'm saying today is what is going to end up happening. There probably will be some changes. But as we stand, it is Friday, May 15th, and the vote is supposed to be happening today. So we should get some pretty solid answers on how this is going to move forward. But I do think that between the mortgage forgiveness, the rent forgiveness, and and the stimulus checks, it should be a huge help to many Americans that are currently struggling. So now let's dig into the EIDL grant and some of the frequently asked questions that I've received. Now I have made a lot of videos on the EIDL grant because I received my grant of $1,000 a couple of weeks ago, but it seems like each video that I publish, I get more and more questions and many of them are the exact same questions repeated over and over again. So I decided that I wanted to address some of these questions in this video. So the first question that I've been getting a whole lot has been about credit and whether or not my credit was pulled. So at the time that I created the past videos that I made on this subject, my credit had not been pulled. My credit was not pulled before I received the grant and it wasn't pulled right after I received it either. But I did receive a notification on Tuesday, May 12th, that my credit was finally pulled, which was almost two weeks after I received my grant. The next question that I've been receiving a lot is, is the EIDL grant forgivable? And what is the difference between the EIDL grant and the EIDL loan? So the EIDL grant is forgivable. So it's quote unquote free money. It's money that you do not have to pay back. The EIDL loan though, on the other hand, is money that you will have to pay back. So what the difference between these two programs are is that whenever the CARES Act was passed and the EIDL program was implemented, but they added this grant portion of that loan program as a way to keep businesses afloat during the kind of processing times of the loan. And so it was kind of like a cash advance in order to help you weather the storm until you received your full loan. So the EIDL grant, which is as I'm recording this, is $1,000 per employee up to $10,000. That is forgivable. You do not have to pay that back. The loan, on the other hand, is something you will have to pay back. It is a low interest emergency loan and you will have to pay it back. The terms of that loan and the interest rate is determined by a number of factors from your credit score and the SBA. And so that is something that I cannot answer because I, I obviously don't know your credit score, but the loan portion, meaning if you accept a loan, you will have to pay that back. If you accept the grant, you will not have to pay the grant portion back and you do not have to accept the loan if you already accepted the grant. So you can just accept the grant. That is what I'm doing. I do not plan on accepting the loan. I just wanted the grant. The next question that I've been getting a lot is, are there rules and regulations on how you can spend the EIDL grant? And the answer is no. Now this question does get overly complicated if you are accepting the loan and if you're accepting the PPP. Now in that case, there are some other kind of things that go into play here. But if you are somebody that just accepted your grant money like me, then there are no regulations on how you can spend that. But it is implied that it should be spent for business expenses. Meaning that if you're somebody who's wanting to buy a new car or buy a new TV, that is not how the funds were intended to be used. And so you should be using these funds for business expenses, either to help grow your business or to help keep your business afloat. But overall for the EIDL grant, they will not be checking how you spent it and whether or not it gets forgiven is not contingent on how you spend the money. Now the last question is also probably the one I've been getting the most and also the most controversial because I don't have a solid answer. And that is, 
I applied, I got the loan offer, but I never received the grant. Or it's just simply saying, I never received the grant and I haven't received any information. And the fact of the matter is, is that the SBA is incredibly backlogged. Things are just falling so far behind that it is, I would say, pretty normal for people to have applied six weeks ago, eight weeks ago, and still haven't heard anything. So I would say that if you're somebody that applied in March or in April and you haven't received it, I don't think that all hope is lost. I think that you could still receive it. But it is important to also note that if you applied right when it opened at the beginning of March, there is a chance that you may have not opted in for the $10,000. Whenever the initial grant application was opened, the ability to opt in to the $10,000 advance was not there. And those people who applied very, very early on in the process needed to then go in and reapply. And if you are somebody who applied at the very beginning of this process, there is a chance that you simply did not opt in for the $10,000 cash advance, which then turned into the $1,000 per employee cash advance, and you may not be getting that money. But it's, it's again hard to say because it's very much contingent on what application you filled out, what you selected, and where you're kind of at in this entire process. But I do wanna say that for me, it took me about six weeks to get my money. And so there is a chance that that timeline is, is getting extended as we continue with this process. And it could easily be six to eight weeks before you see anything. All right, you guys. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you some valuable information on the HEROES Act and kind of what that looks like and how it can benefit you. And I hope that I answered some of your questions that you had for the EIDL program. While you're at it, if you could please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell so that you stay up to date on all stimulus content. I would greatly appreciate it and I will see you guys in the next video.